Hello again. If you follow up the previous tutorial, we've tried to retrieve sequence entry from users. And now, after calculating the GC content and the nucleotide frequencies, we try to pl plot them using matplotlib library. But before that, we need to comment this out and then start to import the library. So we call the library by writing import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So if you don't have matplotlib, what you've got to do is to call your terminal if you are on Linux or command prompt if you are on Windows. So you write down import, sorry, pip install matplotlib. So if you have installed only Python 3, this works. If not, you write down pip3 install matplotlib and this will install the library for you directly. Since I have it, I wouldn't need it. So if your console has a password, you should probably provide the password for it. So it collects the library and then install it. It might take a while depending on your internet connection. So that's basically how it installs the package for you. I have the package, so I don't have to worry about this. <coughs> now, when you import a library, you import a component of it. So pyplot is a component of the library and you import it as plt. So whenever you type plt, it means that you mean matplotlib.pyplot instead of typing this bit of a phrase every time you want to use it. So we can also calculate the AT content just to show. This is not very important, but we just try to have more parameters for the sake of the tutorial. A plus T, and try to show it. Now, what we've got to do is to actually have the axes or X and Y coordinates for the matplotlib to work on. So we need to have X axis. And this should be in a list format. So you write down X axis as adenine thiamine, the same goes for guanine and cytosine. Now for y-axis, you need to supply these variables. So you write down a, t, g, and c. So these should be written according, according to the positions on the x-axis. So a, t, g, and c. You can have this plotted on one axis, on one plot, actually one figure, and then the GC and AT con content or count on another plot. So to do so, you write down plt.subplot and you supply the grid for it, so two by one by one. So this means you have two rows, one column, and this subplot is in the first row. We use bar as a bar chart and we supply x axis and y axis then we label it label equals so this one is for nucleotide frequency Then we say plt.legend to show the label and the location is equal to best so that you don't mess up. plt.show to show the plot. So this shows the plot and let's save and run it. Need to get a DNA sequence or 
you can have a FASTA file and get the DNA sequence from the FASTA file that you have. So I already have one. Let me see if I have it here. Yeah, this is a FASTA file containing my DNA sequences retrieved. I'm going to show you how to retrieve these DNA sequences later on. So let's copy this and see if it works. Now, this is our plot. This is a bar plot, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. So this looks quite neat. Now for the next plot, we can have another subplot, plt.subplot2. So this is our second sub subplot. So we have two rows, one column, and this is the second plot, plt.bar. Now we supply these two parameters. But then we need to have x2 and y2 variables. So for the x2 variable, we write down gc content and at content. Now we can then write the y coordinate as gc and at content variables. Now if we can plot x2 and y2, then label this as gc and at percentages. We can write it like this. <coughs> And there we go. Save and run it. You can always paste your DNA sequence from your FASTA file. Press enter. Now you have the AT and GC contents. And that's it. So the GC and AT as well as the AT GC. So that's how you plot your data on matplotlib, having different plots and different data to plot. And we have two subplots here. In the next coming tutorial, we've got to cover how to retrieve multiple DNA sequences and calculate their GC frequencies.